friends. Good morning. It is Thursday, March the 26th. It's kind of hard to keep these days straight, but we are going to do this. A um, couple of housekeeping things. If you have not sent me your address, make sure you do that so I can um, send you your test back. They are graded. And I have your current grades that I have posted at the top of them. Um, but if you email me, I can send you that also. Um, and then I'll just ma I'm mailing your hard copy of your test to you. Um, second thing is later today, I will be posting your access code to my math lab. And so make sure you get registered for my math lab and I will send you, I will post that code for you so you can get into those and we will start that process. Um, let's see what else that's all. So we're finishing up section uh, 9.1 today. So talking about just beginning probability. So um, kind of as an extension, we talked about um, just to find the probability of something, you have your sample space, which is all of your options, and then you have your event. What is your event? So in this case, for the first example, your event is rolling a six. And then finding the probability of that event. So how many times can that event happen? out of your total. So the first one, the event of rolling a six, um, the probability of that is you have one option to roll a six out of six. So your probability is one over six. Now, if we looked at the probability of rolling a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five, or a six, all of those are one out of six, okay? So all of their events are equally likely, okay? Equally likely. So when we draw a card from a deck, let event A be drawing an ace. So for our event drawing an ace, we have four options to draw ace out of 52 cards, okay? Um, so we have our, um, our probability is 0 0.0769. Remember, probability should always be less than one. Um, and if you are doing decimal points, always go to four decimal places. Now, if we look at a spinner, so we can roll dice, we can spin a spinner, and if we were on SmartBoard, I would spin this fun spinner for you, um, but we're not. Um, but know that um, the spinner is available in SmartBoard. You can determine how many sections you want, so you can always integrate that into a lesson plan. Um, but lo just looking at the spinner, um, is each color equally likely? Equally likely, and yes, because each quarter, each uh, part, each color is a fourth or um, 0.25, the probability of hitting each color is 0.25. So all of these are equally likely. Now, when we roll two dice and we let event X be the sum of two dice, and again, these dice are available on SmartBoard, and you, when you punch on them, they actually roll. So unfortunately, I can't do that. <laughs> Um, but when you roll a dice and you look at your options here, so I can get a 2 through 12. Those are all my sums. I can never get a 1 because two dice will always sum to greater than 1. But if you look at each of these options, are they equally likely? Okay, And in this case, they're not because there is two ways to get a 2. So you can either get a, well, yeah, a 1 and a 1 on each one. But if I look at a seven, how many ways are there to get a seven? I can get a six and a one, a one and a six. I can get a four and a three, a three and a four. I can get a two and a five and a five and a two. So there are six ways that I can get a seven. So when you're rolling the sum of two dice, all of these options in your sample space are not equally likely, okay? Not equally likely. So you wanna make sure as you're, um, as you're having this scenario that you decide, is it equally likely, is it not, okay? Now, I am gonna post a um, graph of the options that you get when you have the sum of two dice, because we will be using that later on, so I will post that graph for you. I should have attached it onto here, but I didn't. Okay, another term that we're gonna use is mutually exclusive. So what it means to be mutually exclusive is that no elements are in common. No elements are in common, so that means there's an empty set with the intersection of A and B. So if we look at this example, and when we spin this, this spinner, um, consider one spin of the wheel. So your sample space is I can either get through, I can get zero to nine. So if event A is get hitting zero to four, and event B is hitting a five and a seven, there are no common elements in A and B. So a five doesn't exist in A, a seven doesn't exist in A, and vice versa. So if event A occurs, 
then event B cannot occur. And that's what it means to be mutually exclusive. If I spin on one spin a 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, that guarantees that I'm not spinning a 5 or a 7. So that's what it means, again, to be mutually exclusive. So a couple of examples. Roll a fair dice, let event E be an even number, and event O be an odd number. So E and O are mutually exclusive. And the reason for that is when I roll a dice, I'm either going to get an even number or an odd number. I'm not gonna get, e I'm not gonna get both. Okay? I'm only gonna get one option. Now, um, a randomly selected student, let B be a biology major and O be out of state. So B and O are not mutually exclusive because I could have a biology major who is from out of state. So both of those could happen. So that's what it means because there's overlap. So it's not mutually exclusive. So mutually exclusive are also considered disjointed events. Now to find the probability of a mutually exclusive event. So this is how it's written, okay? Um, it's a probability of A or B, okay? Probability of either or things happening. Okay, and it's not the intersection, it's the union. That means you're finding the probability of each option, each event, and you're adding it together. So the probability of the union of events such that any two are mutually exclusive is the sum of the probability of those events. So here's an example. Roll a die and find the probability of rolling an even number. Okay, so, um, I can either roll a two, a four, or a six. So my event is rolling an even number. So when I wanna find the probability of that, I have to find the probability of rolling a two plus the probability of rolling a four plus the probability of rolling a six. So each of those are one out of six. Okay. And so when I add them together, I get three over six or one half or 0.5. Okay, which makes sense because if you think about a dice, um, half of the numbers are even, half of the numbers are odd, so the probability that you will hit an even number is going to be half the time, okay, or 50% of the time. So the last thing is talking about complementary events, and complementary events are um, the combination of the event occurring and the event not occurring, okay, those two things put together two mutually exclusive events whose union is the sample space. So I have part of it, I have the second part of it. When I put them together, everything in the sample space is taken care of. Okay, these are called complementary events. So for example, we're rolling a die. Event A is a two and a four. Event, uh, the co so the complement is what happens when I don't roll a two or a four. Well, I either roll a one, a three, a five, or a six. So when I put A and the complement of A together, I get my entire sample space. So that's what it means to be a complement. So when we think about this in terms of probability, the probability of event A, which is either rolling a two or a four, is two options out of six. So the probability of the complement, and the little line on top of the A is denoting the complement. That's the notation. So there's four other options that are the complement, so either a one, three, a five, or a six. Now, if you add together the probability of A plus the probability of not A, you should have one. It should be equivalent to one. So if we add these together, we get six over six, which is one. And that's how you know that you've included everything. So that's included right here. Okay, so you can find your complement doing one minus the probability you can find your probability doing one minus the complement. Okay, so an example, the probability that it's gonna rain is 0 0.30. So the probability of no rain, so that means rain with a line over it, the line is the complement, is one minus the probability of rain, so one minus 0 0.30, which gives me 0.7. So if I add up together the probability of rain and the probability of not rain, you should get one. Okay, another example, if A is the event of drawing an ace, if A is the event of drawing an ace, find probability of A and its complement. 
So the probability of drawing an ace is we have four chances out of 52 cards. So we have 0 0.0769. Now the complement of A, you can look at this two different ways. You can think about, okay, what's the probability of not drawing an ace? So that means I have 48 other cards I could draw out of that 52. Or you can find it by the formula, one minus the probability of an ace. So one minus 0 0.0769, and you get the 0 0.9231. And again, your probability of drawing an ace plus your probability of not drawing an ace should add up to one. Should add up to one. Okay. If you have any questions, um, give me a call. I do have a 9.1 quiz. I'm trying to decide what to do with it. Um, if I decide to put that out there, or I may try to decide to put it up on, um, Oh my gosh, up on my math lab, then I will um, definitely send you guys an email. But um, otherwise, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that yet. So watch for an email. I may just wait and do it. Let's see what we're supposed to be doing next week. Um, I may just do it on, uh, I don't know, we'll see. So I didn't really plan for that before I got on my video. Okay. Um, I will let you girls know. So again, watch for emails and if you have questions, reach out.